Here is a textbook classical normal histologic section of skin on the bottom. This is regular skin. This is not thick skin because the stratum corneum is generally thinner than the rest of the uh, epidermis. Notice there is good maturation from these basal layers all the way up to the surface uh, stratum corneum. Notice that uh, you may occasionally find some pigmented cells stippled along the basal layer. If you look probably here, maybe here, you can see some fine melanin granules. Notice you have some nice vesicles and maybe even a Meissner's corpuscle in this uh, papillary dermis. Notice you have some nice loose vessels here in the interface between the papillary and the reticular dermis. Notice there may be a couple of scattered lymphocytes or uh, macrophages or mast cells uh, within the uh, papillary dermis. And then notice you have the thicker, nice, denser, the broader band uh, collagen of the uh, reticular dermis. And last but not least, we are now leaving the gen. Here's a nice little nerve. Here's a nice little artery. And there's a really little artery. And uh, there's probably a nice little vein. Isn't that nice? A little triad right there. Then when we get to the end of the reticular dermis, we start to get some nice uh, adipose tissue down here. And we are into our uh, subcutaneous fat or subcutis classic textbook normal skin. But what do we have on top? Well, we have a thickened keratotic layer, a thickened stratum corneum, and furthermore, nuclei are within this hyperkeratotic stratum corneum, which by definition is parakeratosis. In addition, even though there is some general flattening of cells from the stratum uh, basal layer, or the stratum basalis to the uh, stratum uh, corneum, notice how it's not quite as maturing as possible. Uh, notice that we have uh, some bigger to darker irregular cells as well within this epithelial layer. Notice there is an increase in inflammatory cells in the papillary dermis. And by all uh, uh, sense of what you feel now. This looks like it might be atypical. It certainly is. This is the primary precursor to squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. This is actinic keratosis. This is the most common little granular thickening you see on the skin of older people, especially in the sun-exposed areas, because it is caused by sun, and that's why they call it actinic. Uh, just like the other two types of common skin cells, basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas. This is uh, uh, influenced by sun. This is not carcinoma yet. This is pre-carcinoma. It may or may not go into it. Uh, this is uh, the uh, dysplastic changes leading up to carcinoma of the skin. Notice this terribly abnormal mitosis here. And if we kept traveling along the little highway here, we would see that there is no infiltration of cells into the underlying membrane, through the basement membrane, into the dermis. But we wouldn't expect that because it's not even really squamous cell carcinoma yet. It is just uh, atypical squamous maturation, sun-induced actinic keratosis, also called uh, solar keratosis in the older days. Thank you very much.